After an EAA meeting one day, I spotted a really cool looking plane in a hangar nearby, something I'd never seen before, so I wandered over to learn more. After meeting the owner and learning more about the plane, I thought this would be something others would like to learn about. I returned a bit later and filmed a walk around. Come along to learn more about this very rare plane, the Quest Air Spirit. Let's say it's the late 1980s and you want to build a plane. Your mission is a small plane, reasonably affordable, to take two people across the country in comfort. You want speed, 200 knots or more, with up to 300 miles an hour possible. But the plane must be very stable for instrument flying and comfortable for you and your passenger. The Quest Air Venture was built with just that mission in mind. Small plane utility, race plane performance, large plane stability, and passenger comfort for two. Experimental, so you can build it to spec or make any improvements you want. Quest Air later created the Spirit, a fixed gear, less expensive version of the Venture. Bruce Milan built one of these starting in 1993 and owned it for nine years, making a lot of interesting modifications along the way to that plane. He decided he wanted to own another one, but this time he sought and acquired the simpler fixed gear model. This is a rare plane. Bruce is working to get this one flying soon. So the plane is in a little bit of a disarray as it's being massaged and improved. Let's hear from Bruce about his plane and the Quest Air Spirit. I'm Bruce Milan, M-I-L-A-N. Yeah. yeah. I built an airplane just like this, only this one is fixed gear and the one I built was retractable. So when did you own this other one? I sold it, um, I think it was around 2005. Well, I built that at, um, starting in um, 93 as well. How long did that take you to build? That must have been... It took nine years. Nine years? Wow. It took one year to do one wing. Oh my gosh. They're so complicated. All these, look at these flush rivets. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a Quest Air Venture, uh, but this is the Spirit model. Doug Griswold um, is the one who designed this airplane. He also designed the um, Piper Malibu. Yeah, Excellent. so the empennage on this airplane is very similar to the Malibu if you look at it. An airplane looks short coupled because the empennage is in the tail is behind the airplane fuselage. Oh, really? Mostly. Huh. Huh. And so when it looks short, it really isn't. It meets all the criteria for the distance between the spars of the of both surfaces, you know, okay. like horizontal stab and and, uh, and the wing. There aren't many of these around. I've, I've never seen one. This has been the first one that I've seen physically. Um, do you know how many there are or any idea of how many are around? I think there are probably about 20 to 25 flying. Okay. Yep. And uh, maybe only three Spirit models with the fixed gear. Okay. Which really solves a lot of the complexity of the airplane. They now it does a, slow it down a little bit, right? So what, do you know what the difference is between the... Uh, 20 the, knots. 20 knots, okay. Yeah. Describe a typical pattern. Well, you're about 200 knots at a thousand feet. Wow. And, uh, and then you, uh, you fly your base leg at uh, about... Um, it depends on how you slow down. If you can slow down pretty quickly, uh, you can get it down to 100 knots at just about, just before you turn base leg. Okay. And uh, oh, somewhere around 90 knots on base leg and 80 knots on final. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty fast. That's pretty fast. And then you're pretty close to stall then if you're flying at 80 knots on your final. Oh, uh, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to be careful because, uh, you know, if you get much slower than that, you, you could get into trouble. And then uh, you pull off the power and um, just... Um, Land it like almost any other kind of airplane, almost yeah. like a tail dragger. What distance would you normally plan for on a runway? I, I don't like any runway um, shorter than about 3,500 feet. Okay. So I like to have uh, a good 4,000 foot runway or more. Mm -hmm. That way I don't have any problem with using the brakes and all that sort of thing. The, uh, the Quest Air Venture model, the retractable model, actually on test flying for a non-turbocharged airplane, it has the altitude um, record, 35,500 feet. Holy cow. Non-turbocharged. That had the Continental 550 in it. Mm -hmm. The guy weighed about 180 pounds. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 
So this one's service ceiling might, I, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but with the fixed gear, but I would guess it'd at least be 30,000 with the turbocharge. Oh, amazing. Yeah. This is the whole wing. And if you look over there, you can see the, um, the two caps. Uh, there's an aux tank and a main tank. And uh, the fuel is in the wing itself. So the skin of this wing is the fuel tank. The whole Top, wing? The whole wing up until almost the end where the two caps are. Okay. So wow. the, there's a spire in the center of the airplane, like all airplanes have, right. and there's also a spire here. Well, the original design called for fuel from this spire all the way forward to this, and uh, it held about 53 gallons. Well, the guy who had the airplane before decided he wanted to have more fuel. So now this carries fuel from not only the front part, but the back part. Did he have to modify the spar? Uh, these are all brand new wings that he made, uh, had, had made up for him. Wow. And um, it's really difficult to make these wings with all the, um, the leakage problems that you might have. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about the airfoil are these slots. Uh, there's that one. There's one here. And it makes an air dam that comes across. So that the stall, if the wing starts stalling in this area, the last part of the wing to stall will be prevented to some extent by these dams mm -hmm. that are invisible. With all the, the fuel that this airplane carries, uh, 86 gallons. Wow. This airplane literally will fly nonstop from here to Chicago. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Jeez. The airplane has flap arounds. This is full flaps on the airplane. Right now it's uh, at about 13 degrees. Okay. If you notice the fuselage really ends here, you might say, at a point. But a lot of the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator is behind the airplane. You so, know, it really gives it a very unique look. I mean, obviously. Yeah, it does. That and the fact that it's so wide. Um, a lot of this is gonna get touched up. Yeah, of course. I've had the engine out of this airplane three times trying oh. to solve a oil leak. Oh my gosh. It's just unbelievable. Taking the engine out of this is, uh, takes probably, um, a month or two, and another month or two to put it back in, and then it still leaked again. Oh my God! I took it out again, and I, I changed all the components, had everything overhauled, and I still had the oil leak. And the third time was a charm. I I took the whole back of the engine off uh, the accessory plate, and uh, had it reconditioned and re-machined so that every surface was absolutely perfect, and put that back together, and it doesn't leak now. Oh, wow. So it's ready to fly again. <laughs> this one has a, um, a Continental 360 in it, uh, turbocharged. And the one I built in the 90s, uh, which was the Quest Air Venture retractable model, had a 300 horse, 330 horsepower engine. It had a Continental 550. Wow. Wow. So how many horses in this engine that you have? Uh, it's about 210. 210? Okay. And you said with that engine, you're, you're flight planning 190 knots, 10,000 feet. Yeah. And that's a conservative cruise. Yeah, it'd be a nice cruise. Yeah, wow. What, what kind of other planes use this engine? Oh, a lot of airplanes use it. it uh, there's a, a 172 that's getting an engine like this. Okay. This one has electronic ignition on, on for have the, the, the top plugs. Mm -hmm. Then it has a, a standard magneto that's back in here. Okay. Uh, for the bottom plugs. Okay. So you got both. One is a redundant system for the right. other. It makes it easier to start mm -hmm. when it's hot and all that stuff. And this, this is the intake right here. There's a suction. The turbo creates a suction. Uh, and it that ends up going through the intercooler and then it goes into the uh, intake manifold. The intake itself is uh, protected from the heat of the engine because this is the intake area. 
So the way to open the cockpit, there's a lock here and there are latches that uh, you can latch this one or this one by putting your arm in there. So that's how you lock it. Oh, okay, uh, so over. that's not, it looks like a fuel door. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, so basically, um, you lift this up like this. So you can see you got a lot of room in there. Yeah, there's a lot of room. <laughs> Very comfortable. Um, oh, yes, yeah, for seating. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, nice leather seats and everything. I, I'm doing some work underneath, so I've got that seat out. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's no, there's all this room for sitting. Oh, and, yeah. And you can put your feet across and everything. And the side controllers are just phen phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The airplane is so stable. Uh, on an instrument approach, it's just stable as a rock. You, you wouldn't believe it. Mm. And the other thing that's really interesting is that uh, when you push and pull on this, it's very stiff. Right. Uh, there are cartridges that have springs in them. I can show you one in, in a minute. And, and so all three surfaces all have these trim cartridges. And so with the hat switch, what you're doing is moving the trim cartridge, which has a double spring inside of it. And you, you never have to put in a control lock on a you know, windy day or anything like that. You don't need it. It, it just... And so you, it just makes it a very stable flyer. Right. Yeah, very nice. So, well, when you're going that fast and with such a small wing that you have here, you want to be nice and stable, right? Exactly. The way the trim works in the airplane is a very simple uh, system. There's a spring here and a washer and a spring here. And so it's very stiff this way. Oh, yeah. And it's very stiff this way. Right. Oh, yeah. This is very stiff. Mm -hmm. And it's very stiff this way. Right. And this is all you need to get it to fly the airplane. Hardly any mo mo movement at all. You mentioned this is a Spirit, and the Spirit's unique because it has fixed gear. Yeah. And then this one you said has an interesting history. What, what was the history of this plane? Well, this, this plane was the demo plane from the factory. Okay. I actually have been to the factory. This was a factory built airplane and they were gonna produce them with, uh, 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 you know, like uh, help people build and right. all that kind of thing. But this, this plane was reviewed in kit planes, you said? I think it was kit planes. I'm pretty sure it was kit planes. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning more about this really interesting plane and uh, the, the fantastic owner, Bruce Mylan, who was able to share some of his story with us on this particular build that he's working on. I look forward to doing a follow-up at some point when the plane is flying and uh, take you for a ride. If you're interested in more information, I put more detail in the description of the video on a number of the links that I used in order to get uh, information as I was researching this. And uh, I've got some other cool videos that I've done in the past, so feel free to check out some of those. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's something in particular that you'd like me to review, uh, or if you enjoyed this kind of thing and you want to see more content like this from me, which uh, I'm looking forward to doing. Uh, thanks again. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.